The God in me loves the God in you. Hello, 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 and welcome. You are listening to the Manifesto on Purpose show. I am your host, Kimberly. I am here to help you manifest on purpose. Thank you so much for joining today. Thank you for all of those you invited. And thank you for subscribing here and on the website at manifestonpurpose.net. The God in me loves the God in you. And that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about today. But before we even get into it, please hear a word from our sponsor. Today's numerology forecast is courtesy of astronumerologist Lloyd Strayhorn and the Astar 8 mobile numerology app. It is Monday, January the 8th. The sun is in Capricorn. The moon is in Sagittarius. It's a nine universal month, an 11 universal week, and a nine universal day. Today is about cutting back on excess and waste where money and other financial matters are concerned. This is what will make it possible to really have the things you need or want for the future. Rather than getting caught up in daydreams and wishful thinking that gets you nowhere, this seems especially the case for those under the zodiac signs of Aries, Scorpio, Leo, Capricorn, Aquarius, Libra, and those born on the 8th, 9th, 17th, 18th, 26th, and 27th of the month. Once again, That is today's numerology report, courtesy of astronumerologist Lloyd Strayhorn and the Astar 8 app. You can get your forecast every day. Just download the Astar 8 mobile numerology app at Astar 8, A-S-T-A-R, the number 8, dot com. You can also download it on Google Play and the App Store, or you can find it on Linktree forward slash numbers and you. If you need help navigating 2024, the year of the eight, get your 2024 numerology forecast. You can go to Kimberly, K-I-M-B-A-L-E-Y dot com. This report will let you know what you can expect in 2024 and it will help you navigate through the years so that you can manifest on purpose. Once again, that web address is K-I-M-B-A-L-E-Y dot com. I'm also extending you an invitation to join the Manifest on Purpose community. If you love the content that you get here, if you feel inspired to grow, become a supporter of the Manifest on Purpose community. There, you'll get exclusive content and ad-free episodes. It's designed for those who want to take manifestation to the next level. Become a supporter. Join the community. Find the link in the description box. I'll see you there. Now, let's get to the show. I must let you know up front that I'm really serious about this message today. I'm very passionate about this message because this message is the very essence of who I am and what I strive to be. I want you to spread this message as far as it will go because the whole world needs to hear this message. This message is unplanned. I'm simply recording through instructions of my higher self, Jeannie. The world is a giant mixing bowl, and I think I should go even a little deeper than that. 
the universe is a giant mixing bowl of many variations or expressions of the creator. That's right. We are all expressions. How do you express this powerful energy that is running within you? That's something I want you to pause and think about for a moment. Now, hear me out. The spirit of the divine is love. Everything that's ever created comes from love. You may never hear this again, but remember this. Kimberly said that the birth of a beautiful baby comes from a spirit of love. You may say, well, I wasn't in love during that time, but the very expression of love, whether you were conscious of it or even knew it existed, was responsible for the birth of the baby. In fact, it takes love to nurture and develop an unborn child. Even hate is created from love. Did you know this? Pay attention to the expressions people use, such as, it's a thin line between love and hate. They even made a movie out of that one. How can the line be so thin if the two are not closely related? Remember this, in order to hate something, you have to love the opposition to that thing. For example, hopefully you don't, but maybe you hate a person because they oppose something that you really love, such as yourself, your views, or even your values and beliefs. I'm going to slow it down one more time to make sure you really get this part right here. You may feel as if you hate someone that has hurt you. You love yourself so much that you feel hatred to the one that takes advantage of or hurts you. Everything ever created was created through the love of the creator. And you, my dear, are a creator. Moving right along to the meat of my conversation, let's nip this hate, distaste thing in the bud. If you frequently listen in, you probably hear me say, the God in me loves the God in you. And I mean it too. This means I look past everything and I look to the spirit of God that is within you. Can you look past the faults of others and love the spirit of a man or one man? There used to be a popular phrase some years ago. What would Jesus do? There are people wearing these bracelets made with the phrase as a reminder of how we should treat others. I look at the phrase now in a more metaphysical way. Here's an interesting fact that you may be surprised to hear. Jesus' name was not Jesus Christ. Christ was actually a title that he earned during his studies. To sum up what the title Christ represents in simple terms, it's divine love. But don't take my word for it. Please read the book, The Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ by Levi. It teaches how we should be living in the current age of Aquarius. What I'm saying here is if We are all expressions of the creator whom creates from love. We shall all express love no matter who the person is, whether we perceive them to be right or wrong, whether we agree or disagree with them. We are created from love, which makes us love. And if we are not expressing it, we are a living and breathing contradiction. We are not here to believe in or do the same things. That doesn't make my way or belief versus someone else's right or wrong. We have to be different because everybody is not on the same level and we need teachers on all levels. Also, have you ever considered that the person or people who have hurt you 
perhaps just don't know any better? No, that's not your problem. You still may be hurt, but the bottom line is life is not about what happens to you. It's about how you perceive it first and then how you respond to it. Let's dig into perceiving it first. Hurt people hurt people. Ever thought about the fact that you were hurt by a person and instead of them just trying to be mean and nasty to you, they were really crying out for help? Allow me to add this. You create based upon your perception. If you perceive that others are against you, it will become your reality. The next thing is how you respond. I have a friend that has been through a lot, no doubt. She's told me some of the things secretly that she has been through over her lifetime. However, when asked about her life by others, she shows them the sunny side of her life. Not that she doesn't have challenges, but because she chooses not to, one, perceive those parts of her life as challenges, and two, she just doesn't give focus to those things. That's how she chooses to respond. It's not being deceptive, but it's a choice that keeps her from being stuck or limited by past experiences. Next question for you. How do you perceive life in general and how do you respond to it? This is important because the key to loving others is to love the God within you first. Now, I can't lead this conversation without giving you some guidelines to follow. These guidelines are designed to help you express the God within you. The first guideline, know that we are all connected. There is but one mind in the universe. Each individual mind is an expression of that one great mind. You are an expression of the creator, which is love. You should reflect that in your expression. Keep in mind that you never know what another is going through or who has been put on your path that needs your help. If you are hurt, keep your distance, of course. But resist the urge to react. Know that this person may be screaming for attention. No, that doesn't mean that this gives them the right to mistreat you. But it leads to my very next guideline. Some people just don't know any better. Perhaps they were treated this way before and learned to treat others that way. Maybe the way you respond out of love will set the example for them. When I first moved to Washington, D.C. from North Carolina, I noticed a distinct difference in how people treated others. I was raised to treat people with kindness and respect. But sometimes, in my place of employment, I didn't get the same thing from a few of the patients. However, I remain kind and respectful, and almost every time, the patient will calm down, and I could see in their eyes that they felt bad for initially giving me such a hard time. Most of the time, I'd even get an apology. You see, you are a mirror. Reflect what you would like to see. This next guideline is simple. See the God in everyone. That's why the scripture is so important. How can you love God but not love your neighbor? And keep in mind, I'm paraphrasing here, but I know you get the gist. Self-love is the first love. That's my very next guideline. You can't love others if you don't truly love yourself. Not everyone's views, beliefs, or agendas will be the same. You don't have to believe in what others do, but have a healthy respect for it 
by not condemning or tearing them down. So many people do this today, not understanding that everybody has a purpose, but not every person is the same or is for you. Next guideline, understand that life is what you make it through your perception. We simply exist. Right, wrong, good, or bad. These are all perceptions based on what you are programmed to believe. And last but not least, know that how others treat you is their karma. How you treat them is yours. And I'll just leave that one at that. Our world would be a much better place if we all tap into our innate ability to love. What you create will reflect the amount of love or lack thereof that you put into it. Love your neighbors. Your neighbors are the ones you are connected to. That, my friend, is everyone and everything in creation. The creative force of the universe makes no distinction on any of us. Can you too look beneath the outer shell of another individual and love the God within them? Each person that does that makes our world a little better. The God in me loves the God in you. This is how you manifest on purpose. Thank you.